As you maybe know, I'm not Isabel Kratz, the head of the library. <laughs> Isabel Kratz is unfortunately <laughs> sick, so she couldn't join us tonight. I'll try to do my best to welcome you as she would have done. First, allow me to say how honored we are to have here with us very estimate speakers coming from around the world to hold many interesting talks during all week. I'm also very happy to see this great audience in front of me showing a high interest about open science among the scientific community. We are here in a great building in which the lack of walls symbolize the culture of openness, strongly fostered by EPFL. I'm sure this environment will allow open discussion without boundaries. On this purpose, do not hesitate to spread the discussion on social media by using the hashtags OSET2017. But before starting, maybe just a few words about the Ecole Polytechnique Fédérale of Lausanne, better known simply as EPFL, an international, intercultural, and multidisciplinary school. Because we are one of the two most cosmopolitan technical universities in the world, we can take advantage of the expertise and skills of students, researchers, and professors from over 120 nationalities who are constantly striving to build bridges between global and local. For example, 66% of EPFL scientific publications were co-authored with at least one international partner. Synergy are strongly encouraged and pushed both at the national and international level. Innovation, dynamism, excellence, and of course, openness are EPFL core values. This trend towards collaboration and openness is a solid base upon which we can build a strong open science community. It is still a challenge for researchers and for all stakeholders involved because it implies a strong cultural change for most, if not all, of us. This said, the benefits of such a change are self-evident. It strongly contributes to the integrity, uh, integrity yes, and the quality of scientific practices. It increases transparency and reproducibility of research experiments. For researchers, it means having access to a broader range of research outputs, reusing them, creating new connections, and possibly extending previous findings. It also means enhancing the visibility and the impact of research projects. The research of publicly funded research should be considered as a public good. It should be made accessible and discoverable in a way that maximizes the public benefits. It preparates to innovation and economic growth and enhance the contribution that science makes to society. For this reason, it is not a responsibility but also a duty for research institutions to be totally committed to open science. But now let's make place to the talks today it's about the open science landscape. And to offer you an overview of the different issues and stakes, we invited three specialists. The three great speakers of this evening will help us in setting the context. Arnaud Wagenet, director of MetaLab. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Director of MetaLab and research associate at the London School of Economics will address his talks to, to his, sorry, will address in his talk two crucial questions. 
To what extent researchers today are engaged in open science? And what are the most important drivers and obstacles for them towards this direction? Laurent Gatto, our second speaker, heads the Computational Protohemics Units at the University of Cambridge, UK, and is an active open research advocate. Thanks to his presentation, we can discover the perspective of an early career researcher on open scholarship. Benedict Fescher completes our panels tonight. He heads the research program Knowledge Dimension at the Humboldt Institute for Internet and Society. He will focus on open science, treats and barriers to the ongoing cultural change. Before giving the floor to our speakers, please let me thank each of you to be there to attend our conferences, and I wish you a fruitful and inspiring weeks. Thank you. And now please join me and please welcome Monsieur Arnaud Wagner.